William Shakespeare wrote that the eyes are a window to the soul. As a psychologist, I'm no expert on the soul, but I will tell you that looking into the eyes can yield an incredible amount of information about the mind and the body. Let's talk about it. And let's talk a little bit about how to make certain that you can use the televideo option on the True Mobile Health app and get the most out of it. When you set up your webcam for use with the video function, consider for a moment the location of the webcam lens in relation to the monitor or screen that you're using. The camera lens is always on the edge of the device and the client's image is typically centered either vertically or horizontally on the screen. Now in regular human interaction, clients perceive that you're more interested in them if it appears that you're looking at them. Frankly, we all pay attention to those things that we care about. In order for your client to see you looking at them, you need to look at the webcam lens as opposed to their image on the monitor. Now that's not much of an issue on a smartphone because the camera lens and the screen are very close together. It might be an issue if you're using a tablet or a laptop, and it will absolutely be an issue using the portal on a desktop computer with a large external monitor. If your webcam is aligned with the horizontal middle of your monitor at the same height as your eyes, it will appear that you are looking at your client, as opposed to staring off into space. The client is more apt to perceive you as being sincere and interested if you are seen to be looking at them, at least some of the time. Now here's another layer of complexity. Since the advent of the personal computer, we become very used to looking at computer screens for long periods of time. But most people are uncomfortable with having people stare at them for more than about six seconds at a time. In some research that was funded by the British government, the average length of eye contact between people in conversations was just over three seconds. The study also concluded uh, that staring at someone for just nine seconds began to create a mild sense of discomfort. Here's the recommendation. Move your eye contact from the camera lens to your client's image and then back and forth fairly frequently. Your client will have the impression that you're interested in them, but the duration of eye contact won't make them uncomfortable. The eyes often give hints about possible medical and behavioral health conditions. If you see eyes that seem to be bulging, a physician's first hypothesis is likely to be Graves' syndrome. If the whites of the eyes have turned a bluish color, the doctor is apt to question if the patient has arthritis and if they're taking the medication minocycline. If the whites of the eye have a yellow tinge, a physician is apt to question hepatitis and liver function. Now, what is a behavioral health worker likely to think about someone who shows a redness in the whites of their eyes? My mind immediately goes to someone smoking marijuana, perhaps drinking too much alcohol, maybe cocaine, or perhaps use of a benzodiazepine uh, like Xanax or Valium. I would encourage you, though, to be careful rather than jump to conclusions, because the client with red eyes could have just returned from swimming in a heavily chlorinated pool. They might have conjunctivitis, allergies, dry eye syndrome, a corneal ulcer, or they could live in Los Angeles, a pretty polluted environment. What about pinpoint or really small pupils? Now, as an addictions guy, I will immediately question opiate use, like heroin, and I'm apt to start looking for track marks. I would note that in the patient record that there is a potential concern, but I'd also tell myself that the pinpoint pupils might also be the result of a stroke, brain damage, exposure to a toxin like pesticides, or it could be the result of a prescribed medication. When I see wide or dilated pupils, I know that it may suggest recent use of methamphetamine, ecstasy, cocaine, 
or a hallucinogen like LSD or peyote. By now, I'm sure you know what's coming. Dilated pupils could also be the result of a head injury or maybe the side effect of a medication. Whenever we see behavior that's a bit off the norm, it is perfectly natural for us to begin to guess about what it means. I would encourage you to consider the optional explanations. Note the symptoms in the client's record and talk with a supervisor or consultant about how to proceed. What else can we tell from noticing the eyes of our clients? You may have found that your clients are apt to look away and often upwards after you've asked a particularly challenging question. This should be understood to be completely normal and should not be seen as evidence that they're trying to avoid your question. Here's something else that you might not know about the eyes. The pupil of the eyes tends to enlarge when clients talk about something that excites them or really interests them. When they first see you and are looking forward to talking with you, the pupils are also likely to enlarge. The eyes may constrict or become smaller if the topic becomes boring. Watch their eyes. Under normal circumstances, the eyes can move slowly, smoothly, back and forth within the eye socket. But a halting or jerking movement is often associated with recent substance use. You may know that police officers use this principle with suspected drunk drivers when they do a field sobriety test. Now please understand that a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing. Please don't accuse someone of being under the influence if they had dilated pupils and or eyes that kind of twitch because they could also have any number of medical issues. During a video call, you're apt to pick up on hints about your client's hygiene, their manner of dress, how chaotic the home is, and other personal habits. If you wonder about your client's living environment, examine the background of the video. Or you might want to ask them for a video tour of their home. If they seem hesitant or embarrassed, uh, you might want to ask to see their home eh, maybe next time. It might motivate them to do some very responsible house cleaning. My suggestion, eh, give it a try, but pushing your client is apt to alienate them. Encourage, but don't push. Thanks for listening and watching. If there are topics you'd like us to address, or if there's resources you'd like us to develop, please let us know. I'm Dr. Mark Rohde, the Chief Clinical Officer at True Mobile Health.